desktop, this whole big screen here. Okay, and on your desktop can be uh, uh, folders such as this here, or such as these. Okay, and normally when you start up Windows, you're going to see a recycle bin sitting there and uh, basically nothing else. And we'll show you how to go ahead and add, to add more items. But um, again, this is your recycle bin. It's your trash bin. So in other words, if you want to throw something away, all you all have to do is left click with your mouse and drag it and release with your release your mouse okay and let's look inside oh, there it is Ooh, there it is okay so um, and then what you do is uh, close this out and let's say you let's say you want to go ahead and empty your recycle bin just right click and click on re empty recycle bin now I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the desktop okay um, so these are folders and within folders, uh, you can put things like uh, files, uh, video clip, just about anything on your computer you could drag into a folder. Uh, you can rename it. Okay, we could just name this uh, um, Bills. Windows 8 has been designed to run across a variety of PCs, from tablets to laptops to desktops. It's fast and fluid and runs beautifully across all of these kinds of devices. Now, when I start Windows 8, I'm here at the lock screen. The lock screen, just by touching the power button, shows me the next place I need to be. It shows me what updates at a glance have happened since last time I used my PC, how many mails have come in, or what messages I might have missed. Now I'm ready to sign into the PC. This is picture password. This is a picture that I've chosen, that I love, of my daughters. I just draw lines, dots, and circles on the picture to sign in to the PC. This is the start screen. The start screen is the home for Windows. It has tiles that represent apps. It has tiles that represent people. It has websites. It has information that's always up to date and always fresh, showing you what's going on on your PC without you having to launch each app. Apps are what makes Windows 8 great. And I wanna show you some of my favorite apps that you can use with the consumer preview. The first one is Xbox Live Games. Now, this app allows me to see my achievements. I can see my friends. It allows me to see my avatar and customize my avatar. Here is Cut the Rope. Cut the Rope is one of my favorite games to use with touch or mouse on any platform. And it's here in Windows 8. And it's been built using HTML5 and JavaScript. It feels exactly like a native app, because it is. So, basically, uh, if you're not viewing the screen as you see it here, simply right click, change desktop background all settings, and display. From here, you can resize the screen so you're viewing your computer just as you see it on this tutorial. So, basically we have the stock Ubuntu taskbar at the top, which will, if this is a laptop, will show your battery, your wireless networks, etc. Sound, time date, user info, and here is the shutdown button, as well as install updates, and another shortcut to system settings. Very helpful, remember this button. So. I've installed the Karyo Dock, which uh, is a really nice feature. It gives it almost a Mac type of feel with ease of access to your programs. And we'll come back to that. Let's look at the Ubuntu Dock. The Dash Home, you can search for programs or files that you have. So we'll search a program I've installed. And there it is, uh, Tremulous. It's a fun game I like to play. From here, we have the Home folder, which is the exact same as my documents in a Windows PC. Downloads, documents, music, pictures, etc. We have Firefox web browser and our LibreOffice suite, which is compatible with Microsoft as long as you save your documents in that format. We have the Ubuntu Software Center and the Ubuntu Cloud. So check out the cloud. The cloud, you can upload your uh, music, pictures, movies, etc., and stream them back to another PC or wherever you're at. So it's kind of nice and it's a free service.
what you can do is if you press and hold it, you'll get a series of additional options here, including power off, putting your phone into airplane mode, which will disable all cellular and Wi-Fi signals. You can restart the phone. And this is a very important feature that parents should be aware of, is emergency mode. So when you put your phone into emergency mode, of course you only would do this in an emergency, the example that comes to mind would be if someone were kidnapped. This will turn off many of the fun features of the phone. So in order to conserve battery life, it'll put the display down. And the idea is you want to maximize how long your phone can stay on. When you enable emergency mode, it will send a GPS signal to one of your contacts. So parents, if you happen to be getting a phone for your kid, make sure that you put yourself as the emergency mode contact. It just means that if something were ever, God forbid, to happen, if they enable this feature, it will immediately send out a signal to you, and also, of course, the police will be able to track to find that approximate location. It only works if cell phone signals are available, so it's not perfect, but it is something. Also, you'll see quick, easy access to enable mute, vibrate only, or turn the sound on or off.